Hello, this is Mr. Matthew. Lesson number two, Catechism of the Catholic Church. Let us begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you have prepared invisible good for those who love you. Pour your love into our hearts, that loving you in all things, and above all things, we may receive your promises, which surpass every desire. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember from lesson one, we learned about what is the purpose of your life and why you're created. Do you remember what, what it is? You were created to know, love, and serve God in this world and be happy with him forever in the next in heaven. And we also learned in lesson one that we know to love, serve, and to know, love, and serve God from Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who teaches us through the Catholic Church. Therefore, what are the chief truths of the Catholic Church? How do we know what these truths are? which we need to believe in order to know, love, and serve God so we can be happy with him in heaven. The chief truths taught by Jesus Christ through the Catholic Church are found in the Apostles' Creed. Together, let us now recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. How do we know about God? Well, first of all, we can know about God simply from our natural reason. You see, if you just think about a beautiful sunset or your favorite picture, you can see the beauty and goodness of God simply from our natural reason. But we can also learn about God from supernatural revelation. And by supernatural revelation, we mean the truths found in sacred scripture, the Holy Bible, and in sacred tradition, which God himself has revealed to us. What is the Bible? The Bible is the written word of God committed to his church for the instruction and sanctification of mankind. The entire Bible is inspired. By inspired, I mean its principal author is God. Though it was written by men whom God enlightened and moved to write all those things and only those things that he wished to be written, the men who, write the, who wrote the Bible were inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, if you remember from lesson one, is the third person of the Blessed Trinity. The Blessed Trinity is one God in three different persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the third person of the Holy, of the Holy Trinity, of the Blessed Trinity, inspired the men who wrote the Bible. Therefore, because the Bible is the inspired word of God, the written word of God, there are no errors or mistakes in the Bible. All that there is is truth because it's revealed to us by God. God used many men to write the Bible just as we use many pens or pencils to write. When we think of the human authors of the Bible, there are many books that make up the Bible. But when we think about when we think of the divine author God, the Bible is one book. Sometimes we, we know who the human author of his of a book is, and sometimes we don't. For example, we know that the Acts of the Apostles were written by St. Luke, but we don't know who wrote the book of Job, 
but we always know the main author is God. So how is the Bible divided? The Bible is divided into the Old Testament written before the coming of Jesus Christ, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, and the New Testament written after Jesus' ascension into heaven. The hero of the Bible is our Lord Jesus Christ. Pope Benedict XV said, Every single page of either testament seems to center around Christ. The Old Testament written before the coming of Christ shows man's need for God's special help and his desire for a Redeemer. The books of the New Testament written after Christ's time on earth give us his life and his teachings. They center around his passion and death, the great acts of his love for us. Some of the passages of the Bible are not to be understood according to our modern manner of expression, since they contain certain figures of speech, parables, and literary forms used by the people of ancient times, but not employed in the present. For example, the parable of the Good Samaritan was not something that really happened, per se, but it was a story that our Lord Jesus told to show us how to love one another. The church tells us what parts of the Bible really happened and what parts teach lessons. We can know the true meaning of the Bible from the teaching authority of the Catholic Church, which has received from Jesus Christ the right and the duty to teach and to explain all that God has revealed. Here we have pictures of the four gospel writers, Matthew, St. Matthew, my patron saint, St. Mark, St. Luke, and St. John. And these are the four writers inspired by the Holy Spirit of the four Gospels in the New Testament, which is written after Jesus' ascension into heaven. The chief message of the New Testament is the joyful announcement of our salvation through Jesus Christ. This is the chief message of the New Testament. What is sacred tradition? Sacred tradition is the unwritten word of God. That is truths revealed by God, though not written in the Bible and given to the church through word of mouth by Jesus Christ or by the apostles under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Sacred tradition has been committed to writing, especially by saintly writers called fathers or church fathers who lived in the early centuries but were not inspired, as were those who wrote the Bible. Among the many holy men who have been called fathers of the church, there are the eight most important. There are four, those who wrote in Greek, St. Athanasius. We have a picture of St. Athanasius, one of the church fathers here. St. Basil the Great, St. Gregory Nazianzen, and St. John Chrysostom. And then there are four of church fathers who wrote in Latin, St. Ambrose, St. Augustine, St. Jerome, and St. Gregory the Great. So you may have heard of these saints before, or perhaps you may even be named after one of them for the, for the young men in this class. And these eight men are church fathers. They lived in early centuries and committed to writing um, divine tradition. So has sacred tradition, does it have the same force as the Bible? Yes, since it too contains God's revelation to men. We believe the doctrines contained in the Bible and sacred tradition by an act of divine faith which means that we accept them on the authority of God, who can neither deceive nor be deceived. <clears throat>